can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? I can hear you too. I'm just joining to watch, really, because I don't have anything I can use. Um, That's fine. But but I have ordered a foam roller. I don't know if you can see, if you saw my post that said that. Oh, oh not, yet, not yet. Yeah, I've, I've ordered a, one yesterday, so it should be here, I think, on Friday. So I'll have it for next oh, time. Brilliant. That's exciting. <laughs> have you done it before, Ros? No, I haven't. But I remember I always wanted to when you were doing it at the studio sure. before. Um, but then the timing's just never worked for me at the time. But so now, yeah, it's exciting to be able to, to wow. join in now. Wow. You're going to love it. Just saying, just saying you might need a bigger, more smooth one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Try yes. not to read that in a rude way. Sorry, <laughs> <Sean>. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, uh, well, yeah, because, I mean, what you get is, I'm not sure what kind you've ordered yourself, but so this is the one that I recommend sort of starting out with. But if you have um, something different, I'm sure it will, we can, it's sure that all the kinda, benefits. Yeah, it's kind of that size, I would say. It's not a really lot, big, big or longer sure. one. It's, a, so it's thicker, the- it's shorter, like that one. Right, so this is a full round. What's most popular at the moment in terms of um, what's out there on the market is half-sized ones, usually. Oh, actually, it might be coming to think about it. Now I'm looking at it next to you. It sure. probably is half, because there are a lot, there are different, um, there was quite a difference in the price as well, I think, because mine was only was sure. about £15, and I think the bigger ones were also a lot more than that. Oh, uh, my- so I think I just went for that to begin with. It was a half one. But. Sure. So there's benefits to both. Um, I tend to, for class purposes and for myself, I tend to work with a full size one. Um, this is about a medium density, but you get all different densities. Um, the firmer it is, the ouchier, but potentially more beneficial. Um, it also depends on what your aims are are for each individual session. What was that? Remember it, Lindsay? He's just oh, being cheap. No, the roller looks, uh, it looks bigger on me. Yeah. So, so anyway, and so, yeah, so as we go through these sessions, I'll talk to you more about um, the roller is, itself um, and all of its many uses, the pros and cons of each different kind. I know that Sean has a half size one as well, and it's an exercise roller rather than um, something. So this one here is like a physiotherapy prop. It's also something that you would see in Pilates. Um, and actually that's where foam rolling myofascial release came from. It, it's from physiotherapy and right the way through. And now you'll see, you'll see them in, in gyms and often people are using them and haven't actually got a clue how to use them properly. So yeah. it is something that without training, you can injure yourself. Um, there are obviously lots of nerves within the body, there are glands, um, there are lymph nodes. All, what's funny, since it's just us three, quality look, looks pre- pretty decent, Sean's saying. Um, that's just a, on the tech side of things, we've been testing things out. Um, so, so yeah, and so you have to be very careful that what you're doing is beneficial and you're not putting yourself at any risk and so the benefit of having a session like this or several is that you build up healthy techniques safe practice and you're going to get the best out of the product that you've bought for yourself um you you mentioned that there's different price points and there really isn't that much difference in terms of there you're not going to it's not sort of like oh well this one has got all bells and whistles and it, a, a roller generally is a roller um, and they're m- made of different substances um, some of them have rubberized um, surfacing on them 
really the main focus is, is the length of it, the density of it, and your ability to use it safely and effectively. So in terms of what it can do for you on a, on a physiological level, it's huge, really, really amazing. Uh, the piece of equipment itself isn't much, but how you implement it, it can benefit your all round well-being. Everything from flushing lymphatic fluid and therefore eliminating toxins, boosting your immune system as a result of that. Uh, you can release one of the things that is most popularly used for and in cool down areas of gyms as well um, is to release muscular fatigue. So after you've had a really intense workout, you can use this to release lactic acid from the muscles and to flush that all through. It works with your body's own stretch reflex. And so you can actually trigger the stretch reflex so that the muscle releases and relaxes. Um, that's a technique that it, it's a technique that shares resemblance with PNF stretches. If you've done PNF stretches with me before. Yes. Yeah. And so it works in a similar way to that. Um, did you have a question? Or did you hear me breathe? Yeah. <laughs> Take a big inhalation. Um, I was just, no, I was just going to say that sounds really useful for um, going on really light, uh, after going on really long hikes like we did last. We did a 15 mile hike okay. a few days wow. ago wow. with the dogs. And um, obviously it was like the longest and furthest we walked and it was over quite bumpy ground at some points as well so it was quite tough going mm -hmm. so the next two days we were both like Marcus and I's muscles from head to toe were just like ah so that sounds like it would be perfect so we're planning on doing a lot more than stuff like that now that we can obviously exercise as much as we want and luckily we're living in a place where we can actually walk from home sure be quite local but you know we're in the highlands and if you're walking out absolutely up a, yeah rural well, areas think, then uh -huh. um it's still local i mean it's all it's, so. it's all you know representative of where you are but yeah, yeah. it's good that you can get out and, and exercise like that and, yeah, and it's so absolutely will be beneficial for things like that um it's the kind of thing that if you waken up one morning and i know that sean had said oh you had a, a sore neck and it's something that you can do if you've slept funny and, and you think, oh, oh gosh. Um, the other thing I was mentioning earlier this morning in our other classes is that for people who um, have regular massages and at times like right now, we're not able to have that connection. We're not able to have our regular treatments. And so, and particularly because it's a, a very stressful and tensing time for I think everybody, um, to be able to gift yourself a deep tissue massage is phenomenal. I mean, there's certain yeah. things that, that it's not going to be able to do because it, it's, it's not a human. And, but yeah. within the you can't blend essential oils. <laughs> exactly. You exactly. can teach it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, but, but within your own body's limitations and within your own knowledge and ability to listen into your own system, you can get pretty close to a similar um, release and sensation. So let's have a little shot then. Let me demo to you how um, to utilize this. So I'll just today, I'll show you a few of the large muscle groups, um, really effective roles for those. Some of the beginners level ones are what I would refer to as beginners level. Um, and you can just enjoy watching on with that. If you've got any questions, um, I'm going to turn the volume up here. If you've got any questions, if you just say them out, I should be able to hear you from over here. And so um, I tend to, I actually do this more often on just the ground rather than a mat. That's personal preference. You maybe want to have a mat just to protect things like your elbows and your knees. So Lindsay. let me start out by releasing Lindsay. really, mm -hmm. you're, you're out of focus. All right. Thanks for that. That should be it now. Thanks for that. Okay. And so 
Let's start off, yeah, with one of the really large muscle groups and one of the muscle groups that people report this being beneficial for. Let's do back. So if we take back as an entire muscle group, so I'm going to just come down towards the ground, sh about shoulder width through my feet and about hip width through my knees. I'm going to bring the roller in towards my low rib cage. Now, I mentioned about how there are some areas, I'm just moving the mic box, there's some areas that you wouldn't want to, there's areas you do not want to roll across. And as we go through each session, and as you're doing it yourself, I'll keep you right with that. But one of the areas is round about your kidneys. You want to be careful of that area there. And your entire spine, however, mostly area of kidneys and your neck. You want to be very, very cautious of those. So that having been said, I'm going to lower myself down onto the roller just very, very gently. And the whole time I'm going to be aware of having alignment through my spine and then pinging. And then we're going to, I'm going to lift my hips up and I'm going to use my abdominals here. So you need a good level of core stability here. So you're actually strengthening your whole system at the same time as releasing it, which is really, really nice. So you're toning and strengthening at the same time. So then what I'm going to begin to do is I'm going to start to roll about a centimeter a second. One of the things that you maybe have seen people do, the, there's like videos on YouTube and oh my God, I just like, I can't even watch them. Um, <laughs> there's lots of very unsafe things uh, in videos and foam rolling and myofascial release online. So you have to be very, very careful. But one of the things that you'll see people do is they'll roll ridiculously fast. Um, and it actually has very little lasting impact. It might feel good in massaging and releasing at the time. It might actually be good in terms of lymphatic release. Um, however, muscularly, it's not going to give you such deep lasting results. So we're rolling about a centimeter a second. I'm rolling that all the way through the full length of my back. And I'm being careful that I've got nice alignment through my spine. I've raised my hips in alignment with that as well. Here, I can bring my elbows up, which brings the scapula out of the way, the shoulder blades. And then I'm just going to keep that nice and gentle. It's really smooth. You want to keep the roll nice and smooth. And then as I start to return back down the body, I'm going to work double time. So I'm going to go about two centimeters for each second or thereabouts all the way down to just before low back. So I'm coming to the, the end of my rib cage, basically. And then here, let's do one more roll. So what's lovely about the foam rolling as well is that you can use it as a warm up or a cool down. So I'm going to roll so you're off. Just, yep. mm -hmm. Are you just rolling, Lindsay, from like the, the top, your shoulders up to the bottom of your rib cage then, not further down, because then that would be into your kidneys. Is that yes, um, that's yeah. where I'm rolling at the moment. So all the way up towards my shoulders and then all the way down towards just past my rib cage. Okay. And then what you can do is you can lower your hips down at the same time as raising your head up, plant your hips down, use your hands to bring you back upwards. So that works as a warming up roll and it also acts as a cooling down. Um, it feels amazing, it feels really, really nice. It does work your, work your abs, so it's, it's toning and strengthening, but it's releasing and relaxing at the same time. It's, it's a really nice combo. So that's a very, very simple roll of your back. And I would maybe go on and, and continue doing that um, for about five minutes. And then here, I'm going to roll through my thighs, another huge muscle group. And so the quads really enjoy this movement. Um, your core does as well. So we're going to come down towards almost like a bridge position. So I'm going to lift my knees up and then I'm going to place my knees down. So I've got my feet about hip width apart, my knees about hip width apart and the femur is in alignment. So I've not rotated out in any way. I'm in alignment through there. And then I'm placing my 
my the roller um, or my legs onto the roller just above my knee. So I'm at the very bottom of my quads, but I'm above the knee joint. That's really important. So that's okay. another area you wouldn't want to roll across any joints. So from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to come down towards the mat. And I'm just going to use my forearms to support me there. You can either form a fist or spread your hands out. I'm going to lift the toes up. And again, forming alignment through the spine, you want to activate through your core so that you don't drop out through your small of your back. You want to keep active through your core. And then we're going to repeat that process of rolling about a centimeter a second. And what you find when you come to do this um, process, it can be quite painful. It can be almost to the point of bringing tears to your eyes. Um, and it's sort of, most people report it as being a kind of a, a good pain. Um, it shouldn't feel, it shouldn't feel sore for just for the sake of being sore. It, you should also within yourself have this knowing that, oh, I'm gonna feel so much better after this. If you don't have that, stop what you're doing. So we're gonna to continue to roll. And as you do that, you might feel the muscles ping, you might feel them just release in the moment. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer before that happens. So I'd maybe go ahead and do this for about maybe three or four rolls to warm up the muscle group before I actually do anything that is going to benefit them on a longer term. So the first time that you do foam rolling is probably, well, it is the most uncomfortable it's going to be because <laughs> you're going to be releasing. Like What's that? Like most things, I guess. <laughs> yeah, first time's always the, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Until you get used yeah. And so practice obviously benefits everything and and but so what you're actually doing is is you're releasing not just the tension that's present in the day to day, but you're potentially also releasing tension um, and calcification of the muscles, so crystallization or what people refer to as knots, from like ten years ago. You know when you really really get down deep. So I can feel now that as I'm rolling, I'm getting deeper and deeper into the muscle as it relaxes and releases. I'm still strong in my core, mindful about keeping a straight line and rolling. Well, one of the things that your body's going to do is it's going to oh quick quick quick, quick go faster go faster go faster because it's going to want to avoid that release um, that mechanism that we've got that holds us where we're at in the moment and but so just breathing into the breath really is the access point for anything that you're doing in the foam rolling the breath is what's going to carry you through so taking deep breaths in particularly if you've got a point of real deep tension that ooh, there you want to actually kind of tense up through it but actually breathing through it is what's going to make a lot more sense. The other thing that you'll find is that pe some people, as they roll through a really super tense spot, or maybe they're doing their IT band down the side of their thigh, for example, and they'll, ah, ah, ah and, you know, and that's, it's wasted energy. It's, mm -hmm. it's wasted energy. So rather than, ah, and release that way, drive that energy down to the muscle and let, that energy be transformed, let it release and use the breath to do that. Okay, so this is my muscles through thighs um, thoroughly warmed up now. So then what I could do is I could choose to do a more advanced roll here, work deeper in. One of the things that I might do to do that would be to raise up through here. Again, you wanna try to keep a straight line so automatically what we've done there is we've lengthened the thighs already so that when we do, <laughs> can actually feel the, the sort of bumps as we move deeper in. <laughs> At times you, you, you can almost, we well, might be able to even see it as the muscle releases. And then I'm going to turn all the way back. 
So that is one of the things that you could do is raise your legs up. So you've lengthened the muscle prior to actually rolling it. Another thing that you could do is you could keep the muscle extended at the same length as it was, but apply extra pressure. So one of the ways of doing that would be to cross your ankle and then by bringing your wall, by bringing your body higher <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be great for undoing your cycling tension Lindsay yes 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 ah oh. breathe <laughs> no um sometimes it is easier said than done but keeping that in your mind will really help you to do it um and one of the things to do as well to remember to to work in uh, create harmony and balance within the body. So if you do, I'm intentionally stretching out through my abs here, just in case you wondered. Um, and so, and that's another thing that's amazing about this is you, at the same time, you can use it as a method of gaining some deep stretches as well. Um, so what we're going to see is just remembering to work on the opposing side of the body as well. So if you release one side, releasing the other as well. So I'm going to cross my ankle on the other side and lift that leg on top. <laughs> I'm going to take a deep breath in. And as we breathe out, I'm going to start to roll. I'm coming all the way through the full length of that muscle. And you might notice as it releases, I'm rolling very smoothly, but sometimes there, you'll feel little judders and I'm going to take that all the way up towards the hip flexor. And then I would probably carry on and do that for about another, say, five minutes or more or less, depending on what I feel I need. And then from here, let me show you a lovely, lovely glute release. And so the glute release, I'm going to come down, guide myself down towards the roller. And then I'm going to sit on the roller sit up high and then you want to just make sure that what can sometimes happen is the roller can slide out from underneath you so you don't want that to happen so maybe place around here you might see in the mirror i place one hand just on top of the roller just to make sure and then the other hand is free to touch the floor if it needs to and i'm just going to roll back and forwards really gradually straightening out through my legs as I come more towards an upright seated position. I can roll that right. Ooh, did you notice that? Boom, sudden, <laughs> <laughs> sudden level change. And then coming through, I'm going to roll and just make sure I'm steadying myself. And I can roll back with that if I want to do all the way up towards the top of the glutes. And then bringing it all of the way back and you can angle your body so that you can get right in towards maybe i want to do outer glutes so maybe i'll angle and lift one hip up again you want to just be careful that nothing is going to slide out of the way and just take that to wherever it feels nice breathing with it and roll back and then I'll go ahead and do that on the other side. So you're going to place your hands and lift to your hip, roll through the other side. And I always find that the glute release feels really nice. Certain areas feel quite challenging. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This one always <laughs> feels really welcome. It's a really re releasing, relaxing sort of a a stretch it is a kind of a stretch and so it seems to me Lindsay that it's very much like um like a lot of the stretches that we do in belly stretch but just mm -hmm. like kind of going a bit further with them like deepening them because like well it's all the same muscle groups isn't it really that we're mm. kind of focusing yeah. on like um we do a lot of stuff with um glutes and Mm -hmm. hamstrings etc <laughs> yeah it's a kind of it's almost like a it's a dynamic 
form of stretching really um and like i said at the beginning it's it bears resemblance the the actual mechanism the science behind it is uh it's not dissimilar to pnf stretching whereby you apply force and then an opposing force and then you remove the opposing force and continue on with the force and it triggers a it almost tricks the muscles into reset so for a lovely hamstring stretch, um, I'll start just above my knee and then roll. I'm showing you this a bit faster just for the purpose of demonstration. I'm going to come all the way up and I'm going to keep my feet off the floor and then roll all the way back down again. And then, of course, there are advanced options with that where you can apply more pressure, bringing one foot on top. And as we go through, and um, if you join me in a practical session, then I'll keep you safe through those as well. So that feels, I can feel that working really, really deep through there. Um, yeah. There's all sorts of roles that you can do for your arms. There's ones that you can do for, there are ones that you can do for your neck, but I would advise those after you've had lots of practice of, um, of basic stretch um, roles. I'm going to say stretch. Yeah. Um, you can do your hip flexors by lifting up and angling on a diagonal. Ooh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would go ahead and do that on the other side. And then whenever you're finishing up, I always come into a nice release like this, just in case you have been holding yourself in alignment through your spiners. Um, a lot of the positions are quite intensive for your core muscles. So I like to do just a nice releasing stretch for your back and for your hips. And then the other things that you can do with the roller that feel really nice is if you take it lengthwise like this, and of course, as we mentioned, you have to be very, very careful of spine, but what you can do is being very careful of spine, you can come down like this and bring your hands out to the side. And this is a really opening stretch for your chest, for your shoulders, um, and it feels amazing. It's a quite a heart opening release as well. So it feels very expansive. And you can just rest there for a little while. So I tend to finish up my foam rolling with just some nice releasing, relaxing, opening yes. stretches. Looks so relaxing. <laughs> it's nice, it's nice. And then of course, being just as careful and coming out of that as I was going in. So you don't want the roller to roll from underneath you. So you're gonna use your hands. I usually slide my hands across the floor there. Use my elbows, my forearms, my hands to come back upwards. And again, just being very careful. So I would lift myself up, slide the roller away, and then come down towards the ground. Like that. Ta-da. Um, so I'll give you a <laughs> little bit of an insight into, into how it's done. And it might have opened up some Thank you. questions or maybe it's answered some questions for you. Um, and you probably, Roger, will be dying to try it by now. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm like almost salivating going like, ah, oh, I wish mine was here. <laughs> but, um, would you recommend using, um, having trainers on for doing it to, to help with grip? Or... I would. Yes, I would. Okay. Um, I mean, that depends on what your floor covering is and, and things, whether or not you're able to grip. But I would say definitely your first few times that you use it, I would recommend wearing something that has a good grip. Um, the clothes that you wear, you also want to have something that has a really good stretch to it so that you're able to move out through your joints and so that the muscles can expand on the roller as well. So you wouldn't want to have sort of skinny jeans or something like that on. You want to have a nice stretch um, leggings or 
joggers or something like that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And it's interesting. I was going to, one of my questions was going to be about um, if you could use it for, for neck muscles, even though you said it, that's one of the more um, tricky bits because, but you answered that already. So, yeah. Sure. Um, yes, it is. What you were saying, sorry, was just um, about waking up some mornings and having a, like, you know, having slept funny. And that's something that yeah. I can get um, fairly frequently, like every couple of months, like something like, my trapezius or sternocleidal will just seize up yeah. and yeah, sure. and I can't turn my head to the side for most of the day so yeah I think that'll really help with that it will and um, and obviously knowing um your your own physiology as I do um I can tell you you, you will receive a lot of benefit from this oh, hang on, hang on. Sorry. I've accidentally <laughs> muted you I think <sighs> sorry speak <laughs> um, I yeah. can't hear you anymore. Oh. I can hear you. It's like a okay. on the side. Oh, okay. Um, so, oh, Rod, I don't know if you can hear. Maybe we'll type it. It's not muted, though. Oh, that's a shame. Um, happened. Oh, are, are you back? No. Um, let me write something. Hello. Oh. Can you hear Say, me? I, yes. I don't know if you can... I have a little button on my headphones and usually I accidentally press it and it meets something, but even when I press it. <laughs> <laughs> so, not, not sure what's happened there. Um, however, we can finish up there. We'll continue the chat on Patreon and, uh, and I'll see you soon. <laughs>